Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we are back with another Sustaining a Bond series. Today, we're going to be focusing on Herblore. What I'm going to do is start from a fresh account and build it up uh, to a point where you would be able to uh, use that account to sustain bonds fairly easily. Now, a really easy way to do this is by making unfinished potions. The entry level for it is extremely low. You can make a decent profit at level 22 Herblore. The one main issue is you need a lot of money to do this. So we're first going to go ahead and do a Druidic Ritual, make a bit of money, uh, level up our Herblore, and uh, we'll get up to a money maker that makes maybe 300 to 500k an hour, uh, depending on the prices. Okay, so to begin with here, we just took our 25 GP from the bank, and we're going to go buy a few things from the Varrock General Store. The reason for this is we need a tiny bit of money to begin with here, because we need to buy uh, some of the prerequisite items for the uh, Druidic Ritual Quest, which would cost us maybe 400 to 500 GP. So we're just buying the tinderbox, uh, the chisel, or maybe even the hammer. Okay, so we went ahead and bought a bunch of chisels, uh, tinder boxes and hammers, and we're going to try to sell them on the Grand Exchange. The price they sell for can be very inconsistent, so I'm probably just going to drop them in for 1 GP because we just need the money uh, as soon as possible. It's not too important about getting the proper price for this. Okay, so we ended up getting 666 GP. Wow, a little spooky. So now we need to buy a piece of raw bear meat, which will be the most expensive piece of raw chicken meat, a piece of raw beef, and a piece of raw rat meat. Now, while you're here, I would suggest buying some wines. I forgot to do this because we will be going over the White Wolf Mountain after. Um, so yeah, having a bit of food will always help out. So we've successfully bought all of the meat. Uh, again, buy some wines right now. You may need them for the quest as well. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and go to Falador. Okay, so we went to Falador and went a little bit north and west and through the gate. And we're coming up here to Kalkwax or something uh, to start the Druidic Ritual quest. We need to do this quest because... Uh, it unlocks the Herblore skill for us, otherwise we will not be able to train our Herblore. So we start off the quest, and let's go ahead and do it. It's just about a 5 minute quest. Okay, just to reiterate this one more time, definitely bring food for this quest. Uh, again, I would suggest buying wines. They're like 4 or 5 GP, and they heal 11 HP. They're very good, uh, because I almost died running out of this dungeon. I'm very lucky that I didn't, honestly. Look, that skeleton just decided not to attack me. Um, but on top of this, we're going to be going over the White Wolf Mountain. Uh, which we'll want food for. Okay, so we just found some cups of tea on the ground. We're going to go pick up like maybe 20 of these and that will be our food to get over the White Wolf Mountain. So if you ended up forgetting uh, food just north of the Herblore shop in Taverly, there's actually a cup of tea on the ground. You can pick it up and then hop to a different world and do that a few times until you have an inventory. He's, the teas only heal 3 HP, so not a lot, but they should get you over the mountain. All right, so there we go. We're done. The quest, a very easy quest to do, and that will unlock Herblore for us and get us to level 3 Herblore. So now we're going to go to uh, Catherby, and to get there, we need to go over the White Wolf Mountain. Now, the reason we're doing that is we're going to go buy candles from the candle shop there. They're only 3 GP, and they sell for 100 GP on the Grand Exchange. Just a good way to get some money started. So we have our inventory of teas, and we're going to run over there. After we've done this once, we'll just buy a Camelot teleport to get back because it's kind of a long walk to get there elsewise. Okay, so here's the candle shop. Uh, we have 350 GP to spend. They sell in the shop for 3 GP each, and they sell in the Grand Exchange actually for 190 sometimes. Right now, they're only selling for about the 100. Uh, so this is probably like 100k to 200k an hour uh, on a level 1 account with almost no money. It's actually not too bad. So we're going to buy the 10 candles, hop to another world, and then buy the other 10 candles out. And there's a bank right here, so you don't even have to run very far to get to a bank. So we're going to run out of money pretty soon here. We're only going to afford maybe 100 candles. Uh, once we go ahead and buy out as many as we can, we'll go back to the Grand Exchange, sell them off, come back here and repeat that maybe a few more times until we have just a bit of money uh, started in our account. Alright, so we made it back to the Grand Exchange, and uh, the actively traded price is showing 190 uh, which would be amazing. If you're patient, you might be able to get that, but we really need the money right now. Uh, so we're going to drop it in for 99 GP. Uh, it still didn't sell. That kind of sucks. Well, we really don't need that much money, so we're just probably going to wait here just for a few minutes. Okay, there we go. We sold off most of the candles for 99 GP each. Uh, so we have about 6k to work with here. We bought a Camelot teleport and a Varrock teleport just to save some time. So from Camelot, we're just going to run a little bit south uh, west back down to Catherby. And we're going to go buy out to maybe 500 or 600 candles. And that will probably be enough money to get us started. Now, an alternative option is to buy... Um, plant cures from the farming shop. This will not require much more money. Maybe you want 50 to 60k to do that and will be a little bit more consistent in the amount they sell for. They sell for around 150 each and they sell pretty quickly on the Grand Exchange and they're in stock up to 100 of them. Okay, so we're back at the Grand Exchange. Uh, we sold off the rest of our candles, but we actually have 507 more to go. So if we were to sell these for 200 GP each, we would make about 100k right now, but we're going to sell them for 99 each because we don't really have enough time for that. 
Okay, so we're actually going to do a little bit of crafting because while we wait for these to sell, I want to make a bit of money. And what we're going to do is spin uh, bowstrings. So to begin with here, we just need to uh, craft a little bit of leather items to get us to level 10 crafting. And from there, we can spin bowstrings for around 150k an hour. Now, hopefully we have enough leather here to get us to level 10. Otherwise, we may have to craft a few gold amulets or something. All right, we're running on fumes here. We have like no money here. So we actually had to go to uh, the furnace over here. We bought just a few gold bars. And we're crafting them into gold amulets. We have like one GP left, I think, legitimately. However, that will get us to 10 crafting. And uh, we'll go ahead and just make the last few amulets here. Sell them on the Grand Exchange. Use whatever money we have left to buy flax and go from there. Okay, so we can afford 500 blacks. We're still waiting for those candles to sell. It's going to take a little while, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and spin uh, 500 flax into 500 bowstring, which should us maybe 50 to 60k. Plus, when we sell off the candles, we'll get another 50k there. So we should be at around 100k after all of this is said and done. We can maybe just afford a Varrock teleport. I don't know. Uh, okay, well, hopefully that will buy when we're in Lumbridge and then we can teleport back with it. Uh, we'll leave ourselves with one GP just in case as an emergency fund. So we're in Lumbridge, spinning the flax, and that should be level uh, 26 crafting. That was all 500 flax that we spun that got us to 26 crafting. We're not really going to use this in this uh, episode, but... You know what, crafting levels are, are never a bad thing to get, and uh, spinning flax early game is a really easy way to get some money and crafting experience. Okay, so we legitimately just ran back to Varrock. I forgot we had the teleport tablet, which ended up buying, actually. Anyway, we sold off the bowstrings and the candles. The candles for about 48k in total, the bowstrings for a bit more than that. So we're at 116k, uh, which is enough to start training our herb lore. We're going to start off by making attack potions, and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we're going to start training our herb lore, and there's quite a few different routes you can take here. I'm going to go to level 22 herb lore for now, and maybe just for the entire episode, honestly. At level 22 herb lore, we can make, well, Guam potions, we can make Herolander potions, we can make Terramin potions, and we can make uh, Marintel potions. So to get to level 22 herb lore, we will need around 225 uh, Guam potions unfinished and around 225 eyes of newt which should not cost you more than 10 or 15 K So extremely cheap attack potions are going to be the most cost-effective uh, At this level especially so we're just going to do that all the way till level 22 Okay, so this should be the very last level here We used up all of the unfinished potions did not take more than a few minutes Early game herb lore is extremely quick and really easy to do. All right, there we go. There is level 22 herb lore, so we can now make the Herolander potions when we get a chance. So now there's quite a few options here, and most of them are limited by the cost. Yes, we can make Herolander potions now, but Herolanders are like 1k each per potion. While we are profiting, it's just going to be very inefficient at the amount of money we have. We can only do like 90 at a time, then we have to wait for them to sell. So what we're going to do is make Guam potions unfinished to begin with here. That should net us around 100 to 150k an hour. Uh, from there, we're going to move on to, I think, Terramin Potions, which will net us hopefully a bit more. And from there, maybe we'll move on to Herolanders. Now, if you want to keep leveling up your skills, once you get a bit of money, you could also shoot four. Well, at level 30, you can make Renar Potions, but that will cost you a lot of money. At level 34, you can make Toad Flax Potions, which will actually be a little bit better. At level 45, you can make Irrit Potions, which is actually pretty effective. You can make around 500k an hour. And the Irrit Potions will only cost you marginally more. You'll need around 1 to 1.5 mil to do that. So anyway, there's a lot of options. I'll leave a link to uh, the wiki article that will show you all the different options and roughly around how much money you can make. The one drawback here is you're not going to be getting any experience, but you can see how quickly you make all the potions. You can do around 3,000 to 3,500 an hour. So we're going to go ahead and do all 3,000 of these, which will take me roughly one hour, and we'll be back with a bit of profit and see how much they sell for. All right, we are back. We did all 3,000 of them. We sold a few off uh, just because we didn't quite have enough for all of the vials of water. So from here, we can sell them for around... 70 GP each, which is only around uh, 90k or 100k we profited in the hour, so not that much. So we're going to put them in here for 73 GP each. We're going to go ahead and buy some more Guams while they sell because it's so cheap. And we'll do maybe one more hour of this, and then we'll move on to uh, Terramins. Okay, so all of our potions sold off. And now one thing you want to keep in mind is uh, while on the wiki it might show that one of them is more profitable, you always want to check yourself. It's really going to depend on the margins of the item. Uh, right now on the Guam potions, we're getting around 40 GP or 50 GP each. However, on the Terramins, we're getting actually potentially quite a bit more because we bought the uh, Terramin for around 190 each. And the Terramin potion is actually not even buying for 260. So we're going to go up even more. We're actually going to get around 100 GP in profit off of the Terramins, which is actually double. So we're actually gonna get closer to 200 to 250K an hour doing the Terramin potions, where on the wiki it only showed 
100k. So the wiki is not that accurate, it's just for a general overlook of it. So we're going to get around 80 GP in profit, which is quite a bit better. So we're going to do as much as we can afford at once, uh, which is maybe around 1300 or 1400 of uh, the Terramans. And then we're going to go ahead and buy um, some vials to go along with that. And we'll do the exact same process uh, for around one hour once again. Okay, something really weird happened. We actually sold off our Terramans. It looks like someone had an offer in already because we sold it for 338 GP. That is pretty lucky for me. I don't know if I'll sell the rest of them for that price. Uh, but yeah, we ended up buying the rest of the Terramans. We kind of have to partition this a bit because we didn't quite have enough money to buy all of the ingredients at once. But overall, we'll probably get around maybe closer to 2.5k done in this hour just because we're having to jankily sell and buy the ingredients as we can afford them. But anyway, we'll come back with around 3,000 bought and sold. Okay, so that was a bit of a mess, but we ended up doing around uh, 2,500 to 2,700, I think, in the last hour and a bit. Uh, a little hard to keep track of because I had to buy and sell them so frequently, which is kind of annoying. But we are done, and that probably netted us around 250 to 300k, which is exceedingly good. So you'll notice in a second here that I'm going to check the Herolanders, and the margin is only, uh, well, marginally better. However, Herolanders will more consistently have that margin. I got a bit lucky on the Terramans because generally their margin would probably be between 50 and 60 as well, where the Herolanders are closer to 100. At this point, it doesn't really make sense to do the Herolanders, but I'll just show you anyway, because right now we can only afford maybe 600 Herolanders, which means we would need to... I uh, resell the items about five times in an hour, which is not super efficient. Maybe if you chuck them in there like every three inventories, you might be okay. But generally, I try to wait until you can maybe afford half of the items for the hour. So for Herolanders, maybe you need at least one mil to do this efficiently. But Herolanders very consistently will make you around 500k an hour, uh, which will get you a bond in around five or six hours, which is really good for the minimal amount of work that this required. So in total, this entire process only took me around four hours. It was just about one hour to uh, unlock Herblore and get an initial amount of money. I did two hours of creating Guam potions and one hour of making Terramin potions. So around four hours in total to unlock a moneymaker that makes you 500k an hour is pretty good in my books. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like and I will see you next time.